We'd like to excuse from our meeting this evening. We have Dr. Dupree who's out for medical reasons, and then Dr. Ben Whiting has been held up. Uh, he's a local dentist and has been held up in his capacity there. We will continue with meeting agenda item number 5A, uh, minutes of the regular meeting held on September 27th, if I could have a motion for approval. President Peterson, I move for approval of the minutes of the regular meeting, September 27th, 2016. Those in favor? Aye. 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 The next agenda item on our item on our agenda is the consent agenda. Uh, all items will be considered as a group and will be approved with, I missed one, certificate and classified. Let's jump to that one first then. Dr. Holmes. Good evening, Mr. President, members of the board. We do have before you this evening the certificate and classified of personnel uh, requests, including the addendum for your approval. All in favor? Aye. The motion? the personnel requests, uh, including the addendum. All in favor? Aye. 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 I'm in a hurry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's try it again. Consent agenda. All items listed will be considered as a group and will be approved with one motion. There will not be a separate discussion of these items unless the board member or citizen so requests, in which case the item will be removed from the consent agenda and considered as a separate item. Uh, each of us as board members has had a chance to review these and discuss with the uh, superintendency as appropriate, uh, but is there additional discussions or items that the board would like to have at this time? Do I have a motion? President Peterson, I move that we approve the consent agenda. All in favor? Aye. 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 Dr. Count, this brings into the superintendent report. Thank you, Mr. Peterson. Members of the board, welcome, ladies and gentlemen to our governing board member or our meeting. It is my pleasure and honor to share with you a few of the outstanding activities afoot in Mesa Public Schools. We are fortunate to have many dedicated teachers, employees, and students, and you'll hear about just a few of them this evening. But first, I offer a reminder about an important responsibility we all share on Tuesday, November 8th. In two weeks, our community has the opportunity and responsibility to weigh in on important decisions that affect our future. In addition to the presidential, state, and local elections, three governing board seats will be determined. This last Saturday morning at the Latino Town Hall, I enjoyed listening with my colleagues to the candidates as they shared their visions for Mesa Public Schools. I encourage everyone to do their civic duty and get out and vote, if you haven't done so already. Elaine Veach, fifth grade teacher at Longfellow Elementary School, was named the 2017 Arizona Teacher of the Year semifinalist by the Arizona Educational Foundation. While, Ela while Elaine's journey ended at the semifinalist level, we are so proud of this and her accomplishments. Elaine is a product of Mesa Public Schools, having attended Whittier Elementary School, Carson Junior High School, and Westwood High School. Go Warriors! She has worked as a professional educator for 22 years at Emerson and Longfellow Elementary Schools and is currently a candidate for her National Board Certification in Literacy. When one of Longfellow's moms learned of Eileen's, Elaine's recognition, she commented, Mrs. Veach is always so cheerful and full of energy. She volunteers her time outside of school with student council, the talent show, cheerleading, yearbook, and more. She helps Longfellow students become better leaders. I don't know how Longfellow students would have gotten through the years without all her effort and hard work. The district has such a wonderful teacher. Keep inspiring others. Congratulations, Mrs. Veach, on your recognition and thank you for your service to Mesa students. <coughs> Gina Nunez, first grade teacher at Jefferson Elementary School, is one of four outstanding Arizona Latino educators who were named Esperanza Latino Teachers of the Year by Chicanos por la Causa. The Esperanza Latino Teacher Award recognizes Latino educators for their impact on future generations. Gina was honored for her contributions to education at an award assembly earlier this week. Gina shared that her passion for teaching is deep rooted in her personal experiences. She emigrated from Mexico at 15 and faced the challenge of learning to how to speak English and the heartbreak of dropping out of school to help support her family. But Gina didn't give up, and with her family's support, 
She accomplished her dream of pursuing an education. Now, after 30 years as an educator, she continues to set high expectations for her students, helping them develop into lifelong learners. Janine Kiropatkin, social studies teacher formerly at Rhodes Junior High School and currently at Red Mountain High School, joined her colleagues from Rhodes Junior High School, Alexis Dapuja, and math teacher Amethyst Hinton Symes, English teacher Janet Kovac, math teacher, and Allison McIn Mc McIntosh, science teacher, for an intense summer institute sponsored by the Arizona Geographic Alliance. The hands-on training incorporated geographic content and experimental learning in the STEMS, pronounced with two S's at the end, standing for Science, Technology, Engineering, Math, and Social Studies, fields of Earth and Space Sciences, Geospatial Technology, Mathematics, Natural Disaster Preparedness, and Sustainability, with an emphasis on implementing and disseminating STEMS lessons at their schools. Industry speakers, including Palo Verde Nuclear Power Plant and the Arizona Public Service Corporation representatives, presented lessons on how to integrate social studies with math and science and strategies to reach all learners in the classroom, as well as tools and apps to help English language learning students. Janine Kiropatkin is currently refining her STEMS lesson on the top secret World War II Manhattan Project. Once her lesson is vetted, critiqued, and edited, it will be published on the Arizona Geographic Alliance's website. And Janet Kovac shared that by the end of the school day, her learning so much, she learned so much that she felt like her head was going to burst. But she would do it again in a heartbeat because it was an incredible opportunity to collaborate with other professionals and create engaging lessons for students. Britton Tarter industrial technology teacher at Mesa High School, enlisted the help of the LINK crew, that's a group of student leaders, and the talent of senior Bryce Brown to produce a video that was selected as the 2016 PBIS Arizona Film Festival winner. The video was featured at the Behavior Education Technology Conference earlier today. The Mesa High team identified campus behavioral situations that needed to be addressed and used the Mesa Metrics, a mature, ethical, safe, and accountable model appropriate to help students improve their behaviors with this video. So let's just enjoy a short segment of their production. Excuse me, miss, you, uh, you lost? Uh, yeah. I'm a freshman, I don't really know where to go. Well, it seems like your class is uh, right up there. Let's, uh, let's, let's go, shall we? All right, and uh, the class is right here. Being ethical in all settings means be honest with yourself and others. Keep your word. Commit to academic honesty and integrity. Be kind. And Accept and welcome everyone. I think that's our little clip. <coughs> Leilani Scott, Director of Student Support Services, said that this video award is important for Mesa Public Schools because it recognizes the successful PBIS efforts <laughs> of that wonderful movie star. He's just showing off again. He's got his BAM t-shirt right there. Um, that what Mesa Public High School is doing for the state. We're excited for Mesa High and thank you for the video and its production. Tyson Henry, a sophomore at Mountain View High School, traveled to the Pentagon to receive the Fulcrum Shield Award on behalf of the East Valley Young Marines, recognizing the group for its youth-based drug demand reduction program. This award is given annually by the Department of Defense during Red Ribbon Week to recognize military-affiliated youth organizations around the world that have made significant efforts in sharing anti-drug messages in their communities. The East Valley Young Marines is part of a national organization for youth, ages 8 to 18, who educate individuals on the dangers of gateway drugs. The group partnered with the Mesa Police Department for training and developed a relationship with the Boys and Girls Club of the East Valley and of Greater Scottsdale. 
Their outreach presentations touched more than 43,500 children, teens, and adults. Congratulations, and thank you for your work. October is Manufacturing Month, and more than 2,000 Manufacturing Day events take place across our country, educating communities about the career options available in manufacturing. Westwood High School kicked off the month by celebrating the opening of its Career and Technical Education Manufacturing Plant. Marlo Loria, Director of Career and Technical Education, noted that the facility was built to bring businesses, industry, and education together to inspire the next generation of manufacturers. And earlier today, CTE, Career and Technical Education, hosted the third annual Manufacturing Day at the Mesa Art Center. Junior high engineering and industrial technology students participated in this event designed to pique their interest in the manufacturing field and allow them to explore continuing educational opportunities. Students were able to speak directly with a variety of industry professionals as part of their activities. Students from nine elementary schools joined other students from around the world to celebrate International Walk and Bike to School Day. Crisman, Hermosa Vista, Jefferson, Lincoln, Longfellow, Lowell, Pomeroy, Sousa, and Zaharis Elementary Schools participated in this event sponsored by the City of Mesa, which raises awareness about walking and bike safety while increasing physical activity. Students displayed banners and enjoyed the camaraderie as they safely paraded to school. The fall issue of our national award-winning magazine, Achieve, was just released. Copies have been delivered to home mailboxes, and board members, you have a copy at your seat this evening. Please contact the Communications and Marketing Department for additional copies, or read the electronic version of the district website. Now, Mr. President, members of the board, this concludes my report to the board of the great things going on, representation of the great things going on, and I invite you now for this evening's recognitions. It is now time to recognize our students of the month. They are selected by their schools for demonstrating qualities of excellence, including persistence in giving personal best, love of learning, and positive attitude. For the presentation of the awards, I will ask the school principal or a representative from the school to come forward and read a short tribute about their student. During the tribute reading, a video of the student will play on the monitors here in the room. Students, that video is about you. When the video begins, you come and stand right here. There's a black uh, star right here, and that's where you stand, and your principal will be able to read some excellent things about you. Our first student is from Keno Junior High School. Will Principal Keiko Dilbeck, the Assistant Superintendent Arlinda Mann, both come join me up forward? Karina Muñoz Vega. Karina es una estudiante ejemplar en la escuela Kino. Ella exhibe gran ético de trabajo y muestra respeto a todos. También le gusta compartir <coughs> su sentido de humor con los demás. Cuando una compañero tiene dificultad en clase, Karina ofrece ayuda fortaleciendo su conocimiento de comprensión a través de preguntas, demostración o refiriéndose a sus o notas o trabajos anteriores. A Karina le encanta aprender. Ella hace sus trabajos dos veces simplemente para que pueda dominar el tema, aun cuando ella comenzó con una calificación alta. También es con concertista principal en la orquesta de Kino. Todos los días antes del comienzo a clase, ella se puede encontrar practicando sola o con sus compañeros. Los maestros describen a Karina como positiva, tenaz y respetuosa. También admiran su habilidad de liderazgo, actitud estelar y fabulosa sonrisa. Felicidades, Karina. Nos complace honrarte como estudiante del mes de las escuelas públicas de mesa. Karina leads by example at Kino Junior High School. 
She exhibits a strong work ethic and, uh, and respects everyone around her. She also loves to share her sense of humor with others. When a peer struggles in class, Karina offers help by strengthening their understanding through questioning, demonstration, or referring to previous notes or assignments. I might, I might have a job for you in a couple of years, by the way. Good teacher skills. Karina loves to learn. She will redo assignments just so she can master the subject, even if she started out with a strong grade. She is also, uh, she is also a concert master in the Kino Orchestra. Every day before school, she can be found practicing alone or with her peers. Teachers describe Karina as positive, tenacious, and respectful. They also admire her leadership skills, stellar attitude, and fabulous smile. Demonstration, please. There we go. <laughs> Congratulations, Karina. We are pleased to honor you as Mesa Public School Student of the Month. Our next student of the month is from Smith Junior High School. Will Margaret Riley, English teacher, please join me? I'd like to um, have Jeremiah Castro please join me. Jeremiah brightens everyone's day with his kind spirit. Jeremiah has perfect attendance and comes to class prepared to learn. He is enthusiastic, helpful, and loves to participate in every discussion. Although he's involved in after school wrestling and other sports, academics is his top priority. Above all, Jeremiah cares. Each day, he packs an apple for his six-hour classmates. He knows that most are hungry that time of day, or they're busy with after-school activities, or just need an extra boost of energy. Taking the time to do this daily good deed is a reflection of his generous heart. As the old saying goes, if everybody did, what a difference we could make. Jeremiah makes a positive difference every day. Congratulations, Jeremiah. We are pleased to honor you as Mesa Public Schools Student of the Month. Congratulations. Congratulations. Good job. Thank you so much. Thank you. Crystal Arbogast, principal of Emerson Elementary School, will you please join me up front? Porter, you want to come on up here and join me? Porter Jeffries sets a great example for his four younger siblings and all of his peers at Emerson. In kindergarten, Porter began to be frustrated learning letters, sounds, and numbers. Through careful tracking and testing, it was later determined that his struggles were due to dyslexia. But Porter never let th lets that hold him back. He advocates for himself telling teachers that his writing might look different sometimes or he may have a hard time, but he will get his work done, and he does. Porter is driven to do his best. Teachers comment on his focus and perseverance. He sets high goals and meets them. Porter is a great friend. He's humble, gracious, and supportive, and he recognizes the pos positive qualities in those around him. Porter is a great example of what starts at Emerson changes the community. Congratulations, Porter. We are, uh, we are pleased to honor you as Mesa Public Schools Student of the Month. Our next student of the month is from Los Endes Elementary School. Will Marie Lombardi, sixth grade teacher, please join me? Mia Di Cristoparo, can you please come up? Mia is a <laughs> Mia is a shining star with a positive attitude. She respects all the students and staff at Los Endes Elementary. Mia excels in all subject areas. She puts forth her best effort even if something is difficult or confusing, often advocating for herself by asking questions. Mia is also involved in activities such as Coyote Broadcast, MA10, and Orchestra. Mia is reliable, positive, and caring. 
She enthusiastically jumps to assist peers who need help. For example, if she sees someone having trouble with technology, she is the first person to stand up and lend a hand. Mia helped an English language learner peer assimilate to school and learn English. Her insightfulness, willingness to grow as a learner, and motivation beyond the classroom is admirable. Mia, congratulations on being selected Mesa Popa School Student of the Month. Longfellow Elementary School, it's your turn. Terry Ramirez, sixth grade teacher, will you please join me? There you are. Come on up here. Um, I would like to present Chantal Gandara Saldana as our sixth grade student of the month. Chantal is an outstanding student. She's a natural leader, and this keeps her very busy. She has served as a student body historian and is currently the co president. She has also participated in cheerleading and the Martin Luther King Junior Day Parade. Chantal always has a big, bright smile on her face. She's upbeat, positive, and helpful to all. She truly exemplifies the qualities of Longfellow Elementary, uh, of an el I'm sorry, Longfellow Elementary student by being safe, respectful, and responsible. One of Chantal's standout qualities is her kindness. She's often found helping peers, changing and maintaining campus bulletin boards, assisting teachers with classroom setup, and volunteering when someone needs a hand. Congratulations, Chantel. We are pleased to honor you as the Mesa Public School Student of the Month. Our final Student of the Month is from Wilson Elementary School. Will Principal Shelley Heath please join me? Come on up. This is Vincent Helpsel. Vincent is a dependable and hardworking Wilson Wildcat, an outstanding student who excels in academics. Vincent shows care and concern for his peers and every adult on campus. There's never a time Vincent doesn't greet you with a big smile and ask how your day is going. His wonderful manners are expe expressed through his words and actions to all who surround him. This ranges from holding the door for someone to helping a friend in his classroom with a task. Vincent also shows grit in everything he does with academics. He focuses on his grades and works diligently to meet his learning goals. Vincent has a heart of gold. He strives to help others and to be a stellar role model for his peers. Congratulations, Vincent. We are pleased to honor you as a Mesa Public Schools Student of the Month. That's an impressive group. When you think about it, we just recognize six great students. <laughs> six of 64,000 students recognized, and we've got some of the greatest students we uh, have had a chance to meet this, this evening. Thank you so much for being here and family as well. Our students of the month receive a plaque from the district displaying their award certificate a $25 Amazon gift card from the Mesa Foundation for Educational Excellence for their personal use. Later this week, our students will be honored at their schools when their principals will present them with a portfolio that holds their photo and the tribute that was read this evening. Student photos will also be proudly displayed at the governing boardroom. As you can see over here on my left, we'll get new shots of new outstanding students, as well as the lobby of the district's administrative services center. Following this award presentation, now students listen carefully. S following our presentation, students are to meet our district photographer, Tim Hacker. That's him right there. You're gonna meet him and he's gonna take a real fancy photo of you, all right? And um, then uh, you'll have the chance to have that photo back. We'd like to recognize the families of these outstanding young people. So if you're a family member here celebrating our six outstanding students, would you please raise your hand? There we are, congratulations to all of you.
We have staff and administrators from many of our schools here as well. You saw Keiko Dilbeck and anyone from the Kino community raise your hand up. Oh, there's a few back there. Okay, congratulations to you. Principal Casey Eagleburger from Smith Junior High School and the Smith crew. There's Principal Eagleburger, and we've got a great teacher there. Crystal Arbogast, the principal of Emerson Elementary School and any Emerson folks. There's some right in the middle right there. Aaron Kazmarek, the principal of Los Endes Elementary School and any, any, any Los Endes folks? Yeah, we got a few. We got a few. All right. Monica Torres, we saw her right over here and the folks from Longfellow Elementary School. And then there you go, Longfellow. Shelly Heath and the principal, uh, the principal at Wilson Elementary School and any Wilson folks. We've got a couple right there as well. So ladies and gentlemen, one more time, we are so proud of these students and their accomplishments. We're happy for what they do on their campuses and we look forward, young people, to your continued success. You are why we do what we do and you bring sunshine to our lives by who you are, how you've been taught by your families and how you demonstrate your family's values at home. So thank you so very much for what you do. And Mr. President, members of the Governing Board, this concludes our presentations with one last round of congratulations to all of our students of the month. Congratulations.
an audience. All right, we're uh, gathered, come back together then. Now we have a, a presentation on the uh, career, and tech, career and Technical Education Tech Squad. Mr. President, members of the board, we have Marlo Loria here with us, our Director of Career and Technical Education, and a couple of friends, <laughs> it looks like, here to uh, share some exciting stuff that's going on in Mesa Public Schools, in particular Westwood High School. I think they and can set a record for the most I'm Skyline after. High School, sorry. Go Warriors, go Coyotes. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes. Ah. I know. I yes, I this is a record. I brought my squad with me, so all right. Thank you all. Thank you, Mr. Um, President Peterson and Superintendent Cowan. I'm honored to be here tonight to present an amazing work-based learning program. Um, that's part of CTE. But before I begin, I just wanted to uh, mention the little I am CTE plaques that you have on your on your desk um, in front of you. I know a few weeks ago, Mr. Dan Hurst had made one uh, for Mr. Smith, and there were, I think, a little bit jealousy going on. So we made Definitely. sure that he made one for everybody to. to uh, um, so I wanted to make sure I recognized Dan Hurst and his welding students at Red Mountain High Schools. They are the ones that that made your desk plates. Um, so now I'd like to just start with a short video that is going to give an introduction of our tech squad and computer maintenance program, and then we'll um, go from there. Career and technical education offers a variety of programs. Computer maintenance is the CTE program that feeds into this tech squad program. So students would take computer maintenance and then advanced computer maintenance and then eventually work as a tech squad member. The program started last year. We needed some help in deploying 17,000 devices. So what better resource than to pull from our own community? We have students that are eager, willing to learn, need a job and just real life experience. Skyline was the first school to incorporate the one-to-one -one devices and they felt that they had students that showed interest in computer maintenance. So we worked last year on um, getting students interested in Tech Squad and start working with information systems and then this year we offered the actual computer maintenance program. And then from there, we've expanded Tech Squad to the other campuses that also have uh, the devices for the students to use. To become a Tech Squad member, students have to be a two-year completer of a CTE course. They have to have a recommendation from their teacher and they will fill out an application for the program. One of the main reasons why I consider the program is because I wanted to have real on the field experience in dealing with computers and helping people. I enjoy working with computers and I thought this was a good work experience and a educational opportunity for me. Over the summer we had over 30 uh, students who participated in an internship, kind of a tech squad internship with information systems. So they were paired with information system supervisors and worked at all of the campuses from elementary on to senior high. During the summer when we were doing field work, I built my skill of learning how to do things on the fly rather than having maybe a few tries before I got to work. I had to do it the first thing correctly which is a great school to have. They've learned quite a bit on how to put in RAM and how to replace power supplies and how to get the OS of a computer to working so you have a valid operating system. I'm hoping most of our students will have the ability to go into an IT or IS field and you know, make a path of their own and either go into repair or programming 
from the skills that they've learned on this. I think it's a really good experience for anybody who wants to not only go into any computer sector, whether it be computer science, computer hardware, information systems. Computer maintenance is where students are learning the skills, and then Tech Squad is where they're actually able to get that real world experience and apply them um, on their home campus and throughout the district. All right, so that was just kind of a brief overview of our, our computer maintenance and, and tech squad program. Uh, we have, first I just wanna kind of talk about um, computer maintenance, just because that is the, the program of study that we're feeding the, or placing the tech squad under. You know, the technology industry is growing where there are over 700,000 jobs in the computer support field by, um, in 2014. Um, labor statistics foresees 14% growth just in that market in the next eight years. Starting wages for the computer repair tech start off about $17 an hour. And this demand for IT jobs, in particular compu computer repair technicians, is what this computer maintenance program focuses on. So in front of you is a program of study and in, uh, of what the program entails. There isn't a day, and I know you all feel my pain, that I don't have some kind of technology issue, right? My computer freezes or my phone drops a call. I mean, everything we have is related to technology. And so um, it can be our friend, it can be our enemy, but you have to usually call someone to help to help you out to get your technology issues fixed. And so these commuter maintenance students are who we will be calling and are calling um, right now to help us troubleshoot what those issues are. The video focused on the tech squad component of computer maintenance, but I wanna give you a quick overview of what the students take to get ready for tech squad. The computer maintenance program gives students the opportunity to learn how to problem solve and troubleshoot computer and software issues. They learn about the parts of the computer and how they work together. Uh, students do a lot of with a, a, a lot of troubleshooting with software because 80% of issues usually are software related. Um, they learn to take the computer apart, put it back together, and then after completing this two-year program, then students can then enroll in a, a tech squad internship. Students will also be able to take the CompTIA A plus um, certification exam, which is an industry recognized certificate that would provide employment opportunities for them once they graduate high school. Um, the biggest piece of this, which has been, I think, the most, um, the most fun, has been the partnerships we've built. You know, Mesa Public Schools is one of the largest employers in the state of Arizona. We are our own mini city, um, and we have a lot of internal resources to make our little city run. So we look to our internal departments to help provide uh, internship opportunities. It's a safe environment for the students. Uh, th I know all of our departments and many of Bobette's area in, uh, appreciate the additional help and support. Um, and so when, t when this tech squad idea was being created last year, we really modeled it after the Best Buy Geek Squad. Um, and we wanted the students to work with our information systems department to help um, oversee this huge deployment of over 30,000 devices within the last two years. Uh, they needed the extra help and they needed the extra expertise. Um, and so I'd like to have David Sanders and Howard McMurphy come up here so they can talk a little bit about their participation in, in the program and also introduce some of their staff that is here tonight. Thanks, Marlon. Great video, by the way. Awesome. Um, so before I give it over to Howard here, I'd kind of like to introduce, if I may, uh, some of my important team members that have a, uh, had a great impact, um, integral part of the tech squad. I have Howard Murph McMurphy and I have Jeff Johnson. Stand up, Jeff. Come on. Okay. Two of the CRT supervisors that oversee the summer projects and also coordinate with CTE teachers throughout the year of helping those students come in to, to the on-site tech. Then I also have um, Ryan Mitchell, who was the, uh, was the uh, on-site tech at Skyline, helped initiate this project, getting it, set the standard kind of high. Now he's kind of moved over to the district office here at uh, IS. And then the, to replace him is Chris Siegel, who has some uh, big shoes to fill. Chris? So what I've asked Howard to do is just kind of talk about the partnership uh, with CT, how they, how the impact it has made for us and the IT department and and as well as how it's done for students. So I'll leave it to them. Thanks, Jason. Okay. Yeah. 
So the partnership between CDE and IS has been an integral part of the success of the one-to-one -one initiative throughout the use, through the use of student interns and tech squad members at our one-to-one -one high schools. We've been able to support teachers and students quicker and more effectively than we would with just the on-site tech. During the 2015-16 school year, IS had three paid CTE interns who worked before and after school to support students and staff with the one-to-one -one initiative. In addition, we had one to two students per class period that were part of the tech squad. Throughout the course of the year, these students were able to complete over 1,500 work orders. While that's an impressive amount of support given to staff and students, it's also just a sample size of everything they did. In addition to providing support in the computer repair room, the tech squad members assist staff and students before and after school and, e and even during class classes um, if a teacher's having issues uh, with their technology. These issues consist of anything from simply showing a teacher how to reset their Helix keyboard to taking apart whole computers and rebuilding them. Not only are these students learning bench repair uh, while part of the tech squad, but they're also gaining customer service skills by dealing with students, teachers, and administrators. This year, we are pleased to have ex expanded our partnership with CTE into other one-to-one -one schools, uh, Westwood, Red Mountain, and Dobson, and are looking forward to adding Mesa High and Mountain View next fall. Thank you. Thank you, Howard. Appreciate that. Um, Howard has been instrumental in building this relationship and this partnership, and they have been so fabulous. Uh, his team has been so fabulous working with our students one-to-one -one and, and giving them um, just that real-world experience, hands-on, uh, that we tr teach in the classroom, but it's so much different when it's in a real-world setting. In addition to working with these students, I'd just like to take a moment to recognize a few others who've made this uh, program possible. So I have Bonnie Hunley here. Bonnie, can you stand up? She is the teacher, our computer maintenance teacher and tech squad coordinator at Skyline High School. And she's the one that um, came to me with this idea of let's try to do something kind of like our geek, the geek squad and do it for our Skyline students. Um, I also have uh, Peggy Lashear. Peggy, you want to stand up? Peggy is my CTE computer business specialist, so she is the behind the scenes. She makes sure that all of our programs, in particular computer maintenance, has all of the resources, equipment, curriculum, lessons, um, supplies, anything that uh, her teachers need, she uh, provides to them. And then also we have Cindy Core here, and Cindy Core um, uh, has taken over the internships this year, and so she works closely with Howard and his group and HR to make sure any kids that are actually hired by Mesa to work in a summer internship or during the year that they're processed correctly. They have this point of contact of somebody they can call if, there's some, if they feel they have an issue, and she's done a wonderful job um, expanding the internship program and supporting our students that are involved in that. Thank you, guys. We also have, um, uh, to hear, we have students from Skyline High School that are part of Tech Squad. And so I just want to give Bonnie a few minutes just to come up here and talk about her students um, that are here tonight. I'll always take any time to brag about my boys. Um, I've got a few here that are past Tech Squad, and I invited them because of the success they have achieved because of Tech Squad. I've got Mitchell Pemberton right here, Mitchell. He was Tech Squad last year and the year before, and he went to UAT, uh, University of Va Advanced Technology this year, and he's majoring in network security and web design from his experience that he has had from the Tech Squad. And I'm, I'm gonna see big things from Mitchell, I think, in the next few years. And then, of course, Chris Seeger, who is employed by the district now for two years. He was one of my original, um, even before we had our devices, he was working with me um, as an intern after school, helping with the computer, so I'm real proud of, of Chris. And Blake Haywood didn't uh, make it tonight, but he's also tech squad and is employed with IS by the district this year. 
So I've got my boys just moving right up the ladder and I'm real proud of them. Um, the rest of you, if you'd stand up, I'll introduce you. Starting over here, I have um, Brandon Young and Caden Muller. Yep, I know it. <laughs> they won't talk when I need them to. And then Adrian Padberg, stand up. Dylan Zimmerman, Stone Flynn, Sean O'Brien, Jesse Twig, and he is my lead tech squad this year. And I guess that's all of us. So these are my boys, and I'm extremely proud of what they've been doing for us. Do you have any questions or anything for them? Do you We'd love to hear from one of them on their thoughts on the program. Jesse. <laughs> <laughs> Jesse drove me crazy as a freshman. I set him as far away from me as I could, and now he's just grown up and become a really nice young man. <laughs> All 100 people are going to be listening to what you have to say. So <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, I'd have to say it was a wonderful experience. I have learned so much and got to meet so many wonderful people out here. Um, what this um, <laughs> um like they learned how to repair computers help people and all that fun stuff um oh gosh. have you learned more about computers and technology then through the process i'm assuming oh yes i've learned so much and um, and uh is it something you enjoy yes um there's many days that i go home and i'm sitting there playing on the computer learning new things how to build servers um, write my, my own programs, and even even study more into how to image and all that different type of you stuff. You think it's helped you to stay motivated in, in, in your, just your regular classwork, too, to be able to be prepared to go forward? Yes. Great. That's that's a large portion of it, is to give you something more than just, you know, the traditional classes. If uh, you enjoy participating in this, we'd love to have you as a district and have you learn. It's a great asset to Skyline and and to your team out there. Thank you. As you can see, we're very proud of this program. Anytime we can take our students and, and showcase the wonderful things they're doing, um, we will take advantage of that opportunity. Um, so really just to kind of close it out, I just want to say that we are, we also have Tech Squad, as mentioned, at our other one-to-one -one schools. Uh, we built in the Dobson uh, renovation, uh, we, there was a piece of the renovation that was part of CTE and we needed another space for our computer maintenance. So we partnered again with IS and we built a Genius Bar and there's a picture of it. So they actually have a little space there where students can take up their um, devices and then the computer maintenance kids are there and the tech squad kids are there to help facilitate and um, problem solve whatever issues come to them, working side by side with the information systems people. And then we also put in some power stations and there's, we actually have furniture in there where kids can collaborate and recharge their computers as well. And if they have an issue with their computer, there's somebody there on hand to um, help them out. Uh, Does look like a Best Buy counter. That looks like a what? Best Buy counter. <laughs> Actually, I was no, going to ask. If it works, we uh, will use it. So, um, and then next year we'll be expanding the program to uh, Mesa High School and um, uh, who's the last Mountain View High School, and they both actually have existing computer maintenance programs. So this will be an easy transition for them to kind of get this tech squad group of kids uh, to participate in this program as well. So that is all I have for you. Do, are there any additional questions? How many kids would you say you have right now in the tech squad across the four one-to-one -one campuses? Um, oh, goodness. I probably should know that. Um, we probably have, it within computer maintenance, a couple hundred kids in the total program from the beginning to the advanced class. And then I believe most of the campuses that have one-to-one -one have at least one to two students scheduled per hour to work with information systems. And then over the summer, how many interns did you guys hire? Was it around 30? Oh, 52, even more than that. So there were actually 52 students that were hired by Mesa Public Schools um, to work as interns um, that were part of this tech squad program as well. What percentage or how many or whatever have obtained the certif certification you had mentioned uh, in your presentation? 
Um, last year, how many students did we have take the certificate? Get the certificate. Yeah, there the certificate was implemented last year, and so I think we had a, probably about a dozen of our students who um, who decided to take it. And this year, we are um, going to be increasing that quite Great. significantly. <coughs> and where do you envision this going? Once you have all six campuses up and going, what do you envision would be? Uh, like the summer intern program, we're talking about 100 kids instead of a 50. What's your, what's your guess well on I'm where sure this is going? Well, I'm sure information systems would love to hire even more than that as they <laughs> deploy more and more devices. <laughs> so, um, you know, as many kids, we want to give as many students the opportunity to participate, but we make them go through an application process and an interview process. They just don't get to be part of the program just because, or at least the tech squad program, just because they completed the classes. We want to make sure that they have also the workplace skills and the soft skills so that um, they're successful while they're in the program. Um, so I, I, of course, I would love all of my CTE programs to expand to thousands of kids, but um, I think you know having a good couple hundred kids as the tech squad, but not just working for Mesa schools. I've already talked to City of Mesa because they have a huge uh, technology infrastructure for running the city and being able to place students with them and then other um, industry partners who've heard about our program are also inquiring of how they could hire students uh, as well. Well, I personally applaud the program and support it, and if there's anything we need to do to support or can be of assistance, by all means, let us know. I just had a question about the certificate program, equivalent to AA, just below AA, how does? N it's not equivalent to an associate's degree, but um, the computer maintenance courses are actually uh, offered for dual enrollment with Mesa Community College, so it would be applied towards uh, their AA degree, and then the certificate is also um, embedded within uh, the dual enrollment options as well. Uh, so yeah, so the, the certificates for all of our CT programs, all of our students will have the opportunity to participate or at least test in, cert uh, in the certificate that the state has identified. Uh, and so we will be increasing that participation this year. So they can get credit at the same time yes, also. Possibly. It is a um, industry recognized certification, okay. so. And we've also talked since the, uh, David and I have talked about um, embedding also other certificates like uh, Lenovo offers a repair certificate since that is what the students are working on and becoming very familiar with. So if there are other certificates that are exclusive to the products that they are servicing, we're looking at also embedding those into the program. Does that also include uh, like A plus, network plus, those professional certifications? Well, the network uh, A plus, I believe, is part of the networking program through uh, CTE Department of Ed, and we don't have a network specific program of study. So right now, we're just focusing on the certificates that are available within the computer maintenance, and the Department of Ed has identified the CompTIA A plus certificate as the one that we should be cool. offering. And a couple of questions. These summer internships, they're paid internships, I'm yes. assuming. Mm -hmm. So about how many hours a week can you work and how much are they able to earn in the summer? 29 hours a week. And they pay in their, uh, minimum wage. And um, I love that Bonnie called them her boys, but it begs the question, and I'll have to ask it up here on this panel, is <laughs> how many Absolutely. girls do you I have? have the same you question. cute boys need to get girls into your program. <laughs> Let's teach you how this works. <laughs> did have a female intern, uh, Cindy said this summer, yes, that uh, computer maintenance is identified by the Department of Education as a non-traditional career pathway. So it is part of our uh, actual performance measures to make sure that we are exposing girls to non-traditional careers, and we will definitely be focusing on that because... Please get these boys out there. They're the one about summer jobs, <laughs> cute boys. What more could they want? We have, I know there's students, uh, girls that are enrolled in the program. It's just getting them to complete it. Uh, the other question I have is related to that picture. I don't know if we can go back to it from Dobson. Where is this on campus? I don't recognize the, it looks like there's a sliding garage door. There is a sliding is garage that door now. That's brand new. Um, that actually used to be the former, I believe, sales and marketing um, and computer maintenance lab. Um, just west of where that door is, is our new um, 
student store, which is part of our sales and marketing program. And then behind the student store is the computer maintenance lab and sales and marketing classroom. And then kind of next to them is where um, David's um, information systems folks are. Um, and so they're all kind of in this little pod working together. So the thought was since uh, they were doing that renovation and the sales and marketing, uh, they, the kids could get snacks. If it's during lunch time, they want to just sit and collaborate after school. The student store would be open for them to get things and then they can sit in the actual um, Genius Bar area and be able to work and collaborate and, and, and make it a very comfortable environment and something that the students would want to stay and work in. So I'd be more than happy to give you a tour if you want to go see it. And we just, like I said, we just got our furniture, so it's we're pretty excited. Yeah, I'll, I'll shoot you an email, okay. arrange that, because I do want to see it. <laughs> thank you so much for being here and for all you do. We appreciate it. Well, thank you, and thank you for your continued support of CTE. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Marlene. Alice, do we have anyone who wanted to speak in regards to the call to public? If I, I will not have us have to sit through the video if we don't have a call to the public. So unless I hear otherwise, I move, propose that we move to agenda item number 13 for adjournment. All right, I move to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, Scout Troops, for staying.